In the center of attention is the importance of, of voting. Today we have with us uh, current council member and former Glendale City Mayor, Mr. Aran Najarian, and uh, R.P. Avanesian, our friend and educator. And we're going to talk about uh, the this period of time uh, from March 5 until November 5th uh, about uh, elections and importance of voting. Especially, uh, we need to talk about this and address this amongst us Armenians because uh, with uh, recent information and data that we have, uh, it states that only 20 to 25 percent of the population is participating in voting, which is not uh, not very good, uh, in taking into account uh, the recent in 2023, we had some developments and events that happened uh, in uh, our regional uh, uh, school districts. Uh, we had very unhappy parents, and uh, somehow voting and elections have very much uh, to say in that. And so that's why we have today uh, an educator and uh, statesmen with us, and uh, they will help us out. They will guide us uh, in this process and uh, explain things to us that we need to know. So, uh, and the first question uh, I would address to Mr. Najarian, um, can you please explain to us what is this uh, election season, election cycle, or what are the primaries, general elections, and how to vote, how to be part of this process? Uh, thank you, Vahe, and hello, RP. Nice meeting you. Uh, this is election season, uh, as you said. We have an election March 5th, and in many races, it's a primary election for the state offices of state assembly, state senator, the uh, L.A. County supervisors, U.S. senator. Those races are primaries where the top two voters, top two vote getters will proceed on to an election in November. That is, unless one of those candidates gets 50 percent or more of the votes. Some of the elect some of the races that you will be voting for, however, are final elections. In the city of Glendale, for example, there's a city council election. Whoever wins those seats will be determined on that day. Same with the uh, school board for Glendale Unified School Board. Same for Glendale Community College. Same with uh, other cities such as uh, throughout the county, there are other cities that have elections which do not go primary and then general election in November. So you have candidates from all levels seeking your vote. Some, this will be their last election mm -hmm. before they win or lose. Others will be put into a runoff in the November election. And of course, in the November election will be quite a uh, vigorous election because we're going to be voting for a president, United States senator, Congress people, and many other races. That's mm -hmm. going to be a very... Uh, heated election and many people will come to vote. Sometimes this March election, the primary, doesn't get enough attention mm -hmm. and we don't get enough voter turnout, especially, as you said, with the Armenian community. They just don't feel motivated, they're not aware, and they uh, stay out of the election, which is not good for our community. You know, from my experience, uh, I'm from uh, Armenia, I'm Hayastansi, and uh, we didn't have much trust in the authorities. Everyone knew that, uh, you know, most of what's happening during elections is corrupt, you know, and people coming here uh, are, for some reason, well, obviously, with, with those reasons, are um, not very fond of, you know, going and participating in this uh uh, processes here. But uh, while living here, I understood that this is profoundly important uh, part of uh, a, a citizen, and you have to take part. It's like, a, it's, it's a right, but it's also a responsibility. And so, um, 
how how do we um, kind of encourage our population? Our I don't know, starting with our grandmothers, our, our elderly, um, middle aged uh, parents, you know, professionals, and uh, and the youth. How how do we do that? Well, in this day and age, uh, social media uh, is very important. Many of the uh, voting age uh, people and registered voters get their news from the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, in the internet, you have different options, of course. You've got the social media option. In the social media, almost every legitimate candidate has a platform. You can type in their name and you'll get their campaign website. Mm -hmm. And in that, the candidate will be telling you why you should vote for them, but most importantly, that you should get out to vote. Candidates take people getting out to vote very seriously. It can mean the difference between winning or losing. I had an election just a few years ago where I won by 150 votes, wow. which is very a small, razor slim margin. Mm -hmm. That's why everybody has to get out to vote. Now, especially for the Armenians or any other ethnic community, for the government uh, officials to be uh, attentive to you and to pay attention to your needs, to your desires, to your values, you have to show to them, you meaning the community, mm -hmm. we have to show to them that we do get out to vote. And if you, let's say, condemn uh, Azerbaijan strongly for their acts uh, against Armenia, you're going to get a good chunk of Armenian votes that may be the difference between winning and losing. Mm -hmm. It may also mean the difference between raising a lot more money than your opponent. So there's voting and there's uh, financing, of course. But for now, sticking to voting, it's so important that our community gets out to vote. We don't want to be overlooked. We don't want a candidate to say, you know, look at these Armenians, 20% vote. Why should I waste my time going to them to learn their issues, to learn their values? I'm going to go to this other community where they have a much higher voter turnout. It can make a big difference for me. Uh, before I get to my next question, I, I, I want to um, ask a question to Arpi because she was she is an educator. She was a principal in one of the Armenian schools, and uh, back in Armenia, from my experience again, um, the when teacher would come into the room and talk about voting, though we we were not of the age to participate in in, in elections, but it was kind of a message to our parents to go and vote for a specific individual. Uh, obviously, schools here are neutral. They don't have those kind of, uh, you know, um, directions. But is there an effort to educate the students uh, to be part of the civic life and uh, to be part of elections? Uh, we, we do our best to ensure that students are involved in civic uh, opportunities and civic life, uh, especially in high school. We have opportunities where students need to do community service and outreach, and oftentimes we encourage them to go and volunteer at a, you know, for a particular statesman, mm -hmm. and uh, who's running for office or is part of the primary or is actually part of the election. Take voters, get register people to vote. So those these are opportunities where we want to see more Armenian youth involved in the political process because we do not have that many Armenian. Uh, politicians and mm -hmm. it would be great to get that and so there is a civic education course mandated um, in the state for us to teach kids civics and so forth but we also run student council elections in elementary middle and high school to mm -hmm. get kids ready and understand um, representation being a leader um, making a difference, changing certain things about your school that you want to do. So we, you, start, you set the platform for your students to want to enjoy and engage in civic life. Mm -hmm. What happens after high school in colleges, you do also have elections and so forth for uh, presidents student council, and students, yeah. you know, or, or um, like Armenian student associations mm -hmm. or Chicano studies you know, groups. And so there are all, all sorts of political affiliations that you can make contact with in college but mm -hmm. uh, in schools we do promote civic duty and civic education it's it's wonderful uh, my, my da daughter she's in uh, fourth grade 
And she uh, last month they had uh, student uh, council elections, and someone was, you know, nominated for president. I was like wondering, you know, I, I didn't have those experiences. It, it was really unusual for me, you know, kids doing elections, uh, choosing a president, you mm -hmm. know, for the council. But on the other side, uh, we're discussing this with my wife, and this is. Uh, as you said, you know, this is a practice for them to be future participants in the society. You know, this is so important. Coming back to uh, the Armenian vote, you know, and uh, continuing on, on uh, voting importance, you know, mostly against, again, this is everything coming from my experience with, with the Armenians of um, Hayastan. One single vote, what can it do? Uh, it's not very important. That's what they say usually, you know, especially older people. Zayn uh, what, in what's is it going to do? I don't need to go, you know, nothing's going to change. Is it true? Well, yes, I gave you the example of one of my races where the winning margin was 150 votes. And imagine, uh, you know, one vote, is just one vote, but if your family votes with you, that's five, mm -hmm. maybe ten, depends how big your family is. And if you have six or seven families together that all decide to vote, maybe you've got uh, 200 votes right there. Yeah. And that makes a big difference. That really does. Now, for the presidential elections, probably not so much, but it still is important to get out and vote because that is the cornerstone of our democracy. Mm -hmm. Uh, is people have the opportunity to vote, and they do vote. And um, it's you have to understand that you're part of a larger group of people that are voting either for or against a candidate or an issue, that it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Once you lose, once you stop voting and think that your vote doesn't count, then I think you've lost hope mm -hmm. with the community and the government. And you're going to think, whatever happens, happens, I have no say in it, which isn't true. That's my next question, uh, because voting is a right, essentially. And if we don't vote and we don't practice our right, what we don't gain anything, but do we lose anything? You sure do lose. There's a community in Glendale, and I won't describe the community any more than that, that is a vibrant community. Uh, they're very successful, but they don't vote. They just don't vote. And I can tell you that the candidates, come election time, come campaign time, unfortunately, either knowingly or unknowingly, tend to ignore that community, ignore their needs, uh, ignore reaching out to them, because they know, why should I do that? There's no people that vote for it. Mm -hmm. uh, even their own candidates from within their community uh, don't get the votes uh, from that community. They just say, I want nothing to do with it. I want to build my business. I want to mm. make my home. And that's terrible. That's a group of people that's being ignored, that's being left behind as the government operates and progresses. How does, how does a community uh, not demand, but present an issue to a politician, to a statesman, or to a party? How do we do that? Well, typically... Uh, you've got leaders within the community, mm -hmm. uh, and the leaders or advocacy groups will reach out, and they'll have a meeting, ask for a meeting with the uh, particular uh, politician or candidate, explain why they want to meet, what it is that's important to them, and then invite them back into the community so they can meet some of the grassroots uh, people, understand when you talk about a culture, when you talk about Armenian culture, let's mm -hmm. say, they'll see what the Armenian culture is. They'll see that we're faith-based. They'll see that we're family-based. They'll see that we're very uh, much into education and self-sufficiency mm -hmm. and success. And that's the way that person gets to understand. And then you hit them with the particulars. In our case, it's Armenia. It's sanctions against Azerbaijan, uh, local issues, state issues, national issues. Uh, and that's how you're message gets to that particular candidate and hopefully you know money as they say is the mother's milk of politics mm -hmm. hopefully that group or the community can support the candidate with funding 
that's the best way to get in and get your voice heard within our government. Uh, you both mentioned about Armenian issues, Armenian uh, politicians, you know, to support Armenian politicians. But I have a question. Is it really um, right to support an Armenian politician just for his, you know, ethnic background or his last name? Well, it, it depends how you see things. Um, I think a lot of Armenian families enroll their students in Armenian schools because they want like-minded families at the school. They want their children raised with people who have same values and traditions. Mm -hmm. So if you come of that mindset and you maintain that and you pull it through, you know, you can think about like, you know, am I going to vote for this gentleman because he's a Democrat at Armenian, but I'm really Republican at heart, mm -hmm. or you know, my policies. You have to then decide what is what is more um, what speaks more to your heart, and, and mm. sometimes you don't. You want to also think when you vote not just about yourself, but about the community, the community, and 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 um, and the future of your children and your grandchildren, and so forth. Um, your decisions sh could be of that it's we, we stick with the regardless of the party line we go with our our um brethren or mm -hmm, you know, our mm -hmm. countrymen uh but it's not necessarily in a small community as, as ours it's not necessarily a bad thing to have that mindset it's it's just a mindset it's it's an option and it and if that's how you feel that's great it's like asking females do they vote female across the board mm -hmm. because they feel that a female will understand their needs better, or a female doctor. You know, these things are legitimate reactions, and yeah, so yeah, it's sure. you know we can make it more political than it needs to be. But who will understand you better than an Armenian politician, or well, your family, or your needs? I, as of right now, I know that me being a conservative, being a Christian. Uh, a father, a family man. Uh, there are actual candidates today on the ballot with Armenian last names, who I strongly disagree with. Yep. And not only these people are um, anti-traditional uh, values, uh, but they're also anti-Christian. So it's uh, well. Then that you know. supersedes your choice, right? So you 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 take your values and you find what's more important to mm -hmm, you, and mm -hmm. you base it on your family and what you want to see. And if that Armenian candidate is not going to be representative of our, the Armenian culture, and the, then you don't vote. Yeah. It, you know, you vote for an alternate candidate who has more of your same values. So for me, I give the benefit of the doubt at the beginning of my analysis to that person who, let's say, would be that candidate who's Armenian. Mm -hmm. But then I do follow up and see if that candidate's values truly are Armenian values mm -hmm. and truly are values that represent myself. Sometimes they don't. Um, sometimes they do, mm -hmm. but you have to make that next step of analysis. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, at, in our community currently, Glendale Burbank area, uh, particularly Glendale, you have several choices of Armenian candidates. It's not like one or nothing. Um, so you can make that distinction. Um, 30 years ago, uh, George Duke Majin was running for governor. Mm -hmm. And what a high honor it would be. It would have been Absolutely, for an Armenian yeah. to be elected. Unfortunately, some Armenians did not vote for uh, George Duke Majin because of his political party. A lot of Democrat Armenians said no. I'm not going to vote for a Republican, even if it's an Armenian Republican. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is a mistake. Mm -hmm. Even if the Republican values didn't line up with the Democrats' values in that particular race, uh, it's such a high honor and such a high position that I think you have to concede that. For instance, if there was an um, Armenian running for United States uh, president from a different party, I think I would give that person my vote regardless of what you know my party was because it's such a high honor. But bring it down a little bit when you get to state assembly, state senate, 
city, city council, council, school board, then you can be more selective, uh, selective. selective mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and distinguish the, the positions that that person has. But we shouldn't just blindly yeah. vote for someone because it's an IAN. Or YAN. Or, or YAN. YAN. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, in that, in that case, uh, how do voters need to be politically more educated and proactive? Put aside, you know, the last name and ethnic and cultural background, but in general, how, um, you know, how do we e educate ourselves? If I'm a young guy, how, what do I do? Uh, you said that every, you know, uh, participant, every, every candidate has a website and social media. Is there anything else that I can do to be part of the uh, political, current political life? You can talk to friends, you can talk to neighbors, you can talk to community organizations, you can read the paper, you can go to the candidate forums, and it's really quite fun to do that, to see, just to be involved in politics for a one month period before mm -hmm. an election to see what the positions are and how they're changing and how the momentum goes, just for a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I'm not saying make a lifestyle out yeah. of it, but uh, that way you can become informed and you can be the one that speaks to your parents and say, mom, this person is really good because he's gonna build more housing for mm -hmm. us, for mm -hmm. example. Let's vote for him. He believes in uh, strong education. He believes in, uh, in the church. He mm -hmm. believes mm -hmm. in faith. You can get those messages out and really be an informed voter, which mm -hmm. is much better than just being a voter. I mean, there's levels of, of hierarchy. One yeah. is a voter, right? Then it's an informed voter. And yes. an informed voter is really the best that we could hope for mm -hmm. in this country. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. And uh, the, one of the reasons, uh, coming back to the to the event that happened with with uh, one of the local uh, school dis districts here, is the reason that you know very few parents are involved with uh, with participating in uh, the meetings with school board and the city council meetings and all these kind of things and you know um, speaking of uh, this uh, we had this event and i want to address this uh, just a little it's very unfortunate that the events escalated to the level of national news now is it possible to prevent this kind of uh, tensions through voting what exactly our parents and grandparents who were part of that are supposed to do we'll start with our people it's like Ara said, you, we hope to have informed voters. And so if you know you're the person you're voting for and what their values are and what their platform is and what they feel needs to change, in whether it's at the li a local level, the city level, the um, school level, or the district level, um, they will present their speech or their you know, at meetings, at uh, campaign rallies and such, and at schools or wherever there are um, Armenian centers or so forth where they go and visit and try to get the vote. Ask them questions that are important to you and find out and become an informed voter. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, like I said, blindly vote or um, vote because of the last name and, and so forth. Um, but and like Ara said, at the local level, which will impact your family, your child's education, and so forth, even more so, you have to be that much more informed mm -hmm. than you are necessarily with um, presidential campaigns, you know, and pres knowing about the presidents. But people are much more interested in higher offices, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and they tend to uh, find, but what truly impacts education or what truly impacts your day-to-day -day life is the city elections, Is are the are the school district, school board, um, uh, college board nominations, because those do impact all of us, specifically based on what they value and what they want for the city and so forth. I was traveling in uh, Europe. I was in Spain on a transportation conference, and I turned on CNN, and I was shocked to see pictures of Glendale, California, uh, in front of the school district building um, erupt in what looked like riot. a fight. Yeah. I don't want to say a riot, but <laughs> it looked like it was a fight. Yeah. Um, 
I came back obviously very concerned and wanted to see what was going on. And so what was going on, uh, as far as I know, and I've taken uh, heat from the school board for this, uh, because they don't see it the same way I do. Mm -hmm. What we had there was a group of parents who were not happy with the type of uh, education their children were getting in terms of sexuality. I won't get too, too much deeper yeah, into that. Sure. Uh, most of the parents were uh, immigrant parents, uh, either from uh, Hayastan, some from uh, Iran, mm -hmm. uh, but a wide, uh, wide spectrum of Armenian parents. And they were there at the school board meeting. They had decided to come forward to uh, express their unhappiness with mm -hmm. that type of curriculum. Um, concurrently with that, uh, a counter group was made aware that, hey, these parents are coming and they're going to criticize uh, our curriculum in terms of sex education, and we can't let them do that. So the call went out to Antifa, mm -hmm. and we have the, you know, we have the slides and the graphics where Antifa says, come to Glendale. So these two groups met. Uh, at the school board parking lot. And there were a few punches thrown. It wasn't a mass melee. No one was seriously injured, but there was scuffling, a lot of name calling back and forth. Glendale police did a good job of breaking it up. And uh, the school board meeting continued. Um, eventually, both sides went away, but there was media coverage because it was an, an unusual event. Um, the, and, and so I'm not saying who's right and who's wrong mm. in this case. Uh, maybe on another show we'll do that, but let's try and be, sure. be fair uh, about this. Um, as soon as the event ended, the next day, the parents were being labeled as hate mongers, mm -hmm. uh, as being extremists, as being uh, not just extremists, but white supremacists. And... And I say, I know these parents. They're not <laughs> extremists. They're, you know, these are these are Armenians. These are our people. They're parents. Maybe they're concerned a little bit more than they should be. Yeah. Uh, the other side might say, but at the end of the day, they're just parents trying to do what's best for their children. Mm -hmm. The governor came out against them. The state senator came out against them. The city mayor came out against them calling these people extremists, calling them proud boys. And that really upset me because that just wasn't fair for a, a parent who's concerned about their child to be labeled that. Um, so I pushed back a little bit. I said, that's not fair. How come we're not condemning Antifa the other side. that was on the other side? I mean, if we're going to criticize, let's be even-handed and say both sides were over emotional, both sides had a misunderstanding of the fact. That's what our governor should have done mm -hmm. as a leader of our state. And the other leaders should have been a little more even handed, but they weren't. So the minute you start pushing back, then they start calling you names. Mm -hmm. They calling you uh, homophobic, they call you uh, anti gay, and worse and worse. So things really broke down at that point. Um, it's something that I've stood strong with, with the parents. Uh, others on the other side still believe that the parents are extremists. And I just can't buy that. I, I don't accept that. Maybe misguided, maybe misunderstood, mm -hmm. maybe ignorant of certain factors in the curriculum. But they're not hate mongers. Uh, me personally being a parent, my, my, my child does not go to uh, that district. She's in Burbank. But... Um, when we saw you uh, come up and talk against that, uh, the parents, the, the Armenian parents, were extremely encouraged, and we felt like someone, there is someone who can talk for us, you know. And me personally, I want to thank you for that because it was very uh, not only encouraging, but it gave hope to us. Uh, that uh, some things are possible to change. There is still ways, you know, and methods and people who, you know, who care about our, our children. Uh, because in some ways it felt like uh, some kind of um, 
uh, ideological war. You know, it's uh, you know things that uh, our traditions, our culture does not allow to a certain age. It was all uh, all boundaries were broken. Oh, every possible uh, tradition, not only in this district, we had the other. Uh, event happening in uh, Santa uh, yeah. yeah. So um, you know, so we truly appreciate that. And coming back to that uh, again, we I want to emphasize this: that why is it important to be part of the election uh, process? Why is it important to uh, vote for people and values for values uh, uh, that represent you and people that you know? carry these values and uh, um, I really appreciate that Thank uh, you. Uh, RP before we finish mm -hmm. uh, uh, I want to ask you one more question sure. this is uh, you've been a principal in a school and uh, just to uh, go a little bit into details to help our parents and our uh, people understand how does voting uh, affect the schools, how does it affect the curriculum, the education process, how does that work? Um, so on the federal level, voting is minimal effect on onto everyday school life. You know, there's federal laws and funding that we get uh, as private schools and obviously public schools. Mm -hmm. But outside of the federal jurisdiction, you're more than it's state and then it's local government. Mm -hmm. So the most impact or effect into your school child school if it's especially if they attend a public school is your local city school district um voting is um for private schools voting doesn't affect as much in private schools because private schools are run by a different um establishment it's there is no uh, uh entity that forces private schools to adhere to um the exact same curriculum that public the schools state, have yeah, to have to give yeah so privates have that um, opportunity. Does, does, do some privates get federal funding? Absolutely. Um, but outside of that, uh, for private schools, um, voting may not necessarily impact them. But if you have the wrong candidates in the position that are affecting public schools, and curriculum is not something that you appreciate or want, or you want a more a different type of, or you want a faith-based uh, school system, or if you want an independent school system that you know, it doesn't apply to what public school measures are saying. Then mm -hmm. yes, you can you can enroll your children in private school, but it takes it costs money. So not course, everybody's course. in that position. Yeah. So if you're not in the position of paying for your child's education and getting the type of education or uh, community that you want, Preferred. and you have to enroll your children in public school, well, it's that much more important for you to vote and know mm -hmm. who you're voting mm -hmm. for and make an informed decision because those people who are serve on the school board, who serve on um, city council, will directly impact your child's in education. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Najarian, uh, RP Ovanesian. I truly appreciate uh, your, uh, you being here, your time, and uh, you know, helping us understand this process is uh, how does voting uh, work here? How, why are elections so important for uh, general populations, but also for, for the Armenian population here in particular? And uh, again, if you have uh, some kind of message, uh, please feel free to address the community. Well, thank you, Vahe, for inviting me. Um, this is election season and now is your chance to look at your ballot that you're going to be receiving in the mail if you haven't already received it and decide who you're going to vote for ask people about those candidates listen to friends go on the internet if you can turn on the tv read the newspapers and find out who the very best person is that represents you in the values that you hold important and please get out and vote it will make our community stronger.